Oh, let's go, baby! Woohoo! Woo -hoo. Send it! Oh, yep. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Fresh Crits of Melbourne. Now, if you have not been following the series this year, the last time, and the last time you watched was when I was down at Hawthorne, you'd notice now that I've signed up to a World Tour team, added about, you know, 100 watts to my FTP, and can now sprint at around 1,400 watts. But... Look, if you are, and I'm sure you have been subscribed to the channel and you have been following, then you would be well informed to know that I've been given the cameras to the great man, an all-round top bloke, Jensen Plowright, as he's, um, you know, down at the teardrop for the first crit of the season to absolutely light it up at his home race. So that's what we've got the ca that's who we've got the cameras on today, and. You'll be pleased to know it's going to be full of excitement. You can already see first attack, bang, launches off the front. Got a gap, launching up the hill, 700 plus watts. This is what it's going to be about, ladies and gentlemen. So if you do like this stuff, I try to get videos up as often as I can from crits all around Melbourne. Please do me a favor, like, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel because, because if I can get a few more subscribers onto the channel, then we might have the opportunity to get some drones launched up in the sky and follow us around the racetrack CX style like you might have seen on some of the social meds. So um, without further ado, we may as well get stuck in. It looks like this attack's been brought back. We're going to uh, skip ahead a little bit, pick it up at some different moments of the race as another attack's being launched off the front. So strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, because we are in for one hell of a bike race. Stay tuned. All right, so we've only been going oh, like five extra minutes since the last time we spoke. And I just wanted to highlight this one as he's rubbing shoulders with Riley. Um, as I just wanted to highlight this one. This is another attack that Jensen puts in here. And I just want to like highlight how he goes about doing it because there's a couple of different ways to attack. So he lines up and takes the inside line here and hits the group with speed. And when he does stuff like this or when you launch an attack like this and hit the front with speed as he's like run up into it, you've got every extra little bit of a chance to get away. You're giving yourself the best opportunity there. And if you attack from the front, you may already know this, if you were riding at the front and then you attack and surge off the front, it's gonna be very easy for the riders that are just behind you to follow that move and jump across. So he's done this really, really well. He's already got a break. He's joining TJ, who's up the road. Um, but now, you know, at Hawthorne, how many of these breaks actually get away? Please comment below if you have witnessed a breakaway that's stuck and tell us all about it in the comments. Um, so look, let's just uh, skip ahead a little bit further forward in this one and uh, we'll see how this little break plays out with the two boys. Two kilometers later, you can see in the rear cam now that there's two other riders have bridged across as Jensen comes to the start finish line. Um, and this is great because the more riders that you have coming with you, um, it's going to help the uh, the move get across. But you can already see the peloton is not very far behind. Jensen's fully aware of this. The other riders are most likely aware of this. So you've got to make the decision now. Do you sit up, wait to get caught? Or you know, do you hope that the peloton just plays a little bit of games and doesn't quite catch you and allows you to roll at the front? TJ's already pulled uh, pulled the parachute. He's fallen back. As Mark O'Brien, the great Mark O'Brien, I should say, has strung everything back together, it seems. Now, always a concern. Once the brake's been caught like this, the next move generally happens in pretty rapid succession. What I mean by that, bang, once the group's caught, another attack will be launched up the road. As you see, 104 fl flicking an elbow. Jensen a little bit reluctantly pulls through there. Just tapping through a nice, easy 250 watts as he comes into the bottom corner here. Let's see how he rides it. Nice and wide, comes in with plenty of speed, hits that apex, takes the road all the way out to the gutter. I reckon that's textbook, and I reckon even uh, Kerry would be impressed by that one. So let's skip a little bit further ahead now that the group is basically being caught. We'll see where it goes. I mean, essentially, they could sprint across, but and this is the worrying sign for Jensen. He's sitting on the front. He's pushing some pretty big watts, watts there. As he looks behind, he knows, he can sense it, that there's an attack going to be coming. 
and it's only a matter of time before it happens. You see here, Mark O'Brien pulling the turns. Behind him, he's got uh, the Oliver's rider, Bentley Nequette Olden. Apologies if I mispronunciate that. So that's some two absolute hitters that you've got to be mindful of. And Marco's a pretty crafty rider. He knows exactly how to get away. But you can see, I think it's Bentley who launches the first attack straight up the inside. A few riders do follow. I think we've got, uh, there's Aiden, and I think that might be Dill, as well as Thomas going across. Marco's doing what he can to chase on. It is all happening, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got 19 Ks to go in this race. Man, Haygrade is an absolute torture fest. Let's skip a little bit further ahead in this one. And we're going to pick it up when the pace has actually backed off quite a bit. Because at that moment, as we've spoken about before, when it's things are going nice and slow and easy, you always know in the back of your mind it's going to start heating up. So let's go from there. Okay, so we skipped ahead a couple of minutes now. And the pace, it's come off a little bit. Mark O'Brien's attacked maybe a baker's dozen times. I think that's 13. And um, so the pace is backed off. Jensen's pushing under 200 watts. But it's only a matter of time before the madman goes again. There he goes. Mark O'Brien launches another attack off the front. But, you know, because his legs might be getting a little bit heavy from all those constant attacks, everybody's on it. Everyone jumped onto his attack, jumped onto his moves. Aiden Butterjack very quick. So is Dylan. I think that's in the Onya kit. And um, so they're not going to let anything go. The peloton's really strung out. You can see in the rear camera, it's all the way down to the bottom corner. Nothing or no one is letting anything get away. So it's one of those things, you know, do you constantly just push the attacks, push the attacks, push the attacks and hoping that you split the group, bring it down to maybe 10, 15 riders and then battle it out between the two? On this course, it is hard to do that purely because you have that backside of the course where they're about to hit you know, once they come around this corner where they can actually you know sit up a little bit and you got the downhill section but you know they've gone and whacked it again we've got Marco O'Brien launch another attack uh, there's Aiden as well doing the work and Jensen's been smart enough to jump on the wheel and not just do that but attack straight over the top Aiden's really quick to to, to, to realize onto this as they pass a C grade rider there so this is what Hawthorne's all about. It's those constant, repeated efforts, full VO2 efforts. There's no let up. There's no recovery. It is full gas every single lap. Very, very hard to recover on this sort of course. You may be sick of it, but I'm definitely not. You know how much I love when someone nails this corner. You can see here Jensen and Tom coming into this corner. Tom just one bike length um, into this corner, but as he comes out of it, that's two. Now that's three bike lengths he's put into him just in that one corner. And the surprising thing here, the almost the unorthodox way Jensen goes into that, he's actually sitting up on the hoods. Now, not too sure about that. I'm all about drops, getting that gravity, uh, getting that weight as low as possible. But he's a world tour profesh. He knows what he's doing. And I am not someone who is going to, to critique that as he pulls away from the field once again, leaving Tom to do all the work. So let's uh, skip ahead and see where this little cheeky little attack goes so low into that corner. So Tom eventually gets across, joined by the great man, Marco O'Brien, and Tom gets on the front and starts to rip a turn. Marco is just bridged across, and as he does that, he waits for no one as he launches another attack off the front. Can Jensen respond? He looks behind and he sees there's a few riders coming up. There's Aiden coming through. There's no need for him to try to bring back every single um, attack that goes off the front. Let some other riders do it. Uh, he can then sit in, recover, get that heart rate down again, join, get, move himself back to the front of the bike race and launch again. So this is Hawthorne. It's rinse and repeat of this the entire race. And as the further, the more laps you do, the heavier the legs get. Well, for some anyway, but not for TJ, as we will, he'll be featuring very, very soon in the next clip where you see him bridge across back to a group. We skipped about five minutes into this race and there's a group of about four riders off the front. Uh, TJ was one of them. He's also bridging across. But So Jensen's bridged to TJ and basically TJ has put in this huge effort, mammoth effort, to drag both of them across. There you can see the breakaway riders. Now the best form of um, defense is offense and Jensen does exactly that. He bridges, jumps straight off TJ's wheel. Tom in, in, the, uh, in the draft as well rips this corner gets back to the front of the bike race, and you can see the peloton sitting, um, you know, at least 
a good five seconds off the back there round in that corner. Now, the issue for Jensen is everyone's looking absolutely cooked here, rocking and rolling from Aiden. He's been um, so animated this entire race. Marco's still looking very composed after his, I don't know how, I can't even count how many attacks he's had this race. Meanwhile, we've got Thomas Lombardi stuck on Jensen's wheel like wheat bix that's been left in the sink for weeks. He's not letting up. He knows that um, he wants to take him down. Is this the race he's going to do it? You're going to have to wait to the end to find out as they rip this bottom corner with the peloton in um, right behind them. The peloton is not interested in letting anything get up the road today. So what we might do is we'll skip into the final three laps and the chaos that is, and we can go from there. Stay tuned. But before we look at that last three laps, I wanted to just point out the most agile man in cleats going around. Look at this gentleman here, almost take down the entire pillow as he skits and skates back onto the sidewalk in his cleats. Um, it's impressive stuff. It's impressive stuff. But let's move into the last three laps now. Wait. Right. Yeah, I reckon. Oh, three to go now. Let loose, brother. Let loose. Let him off the leash. Stay right. <laughs> You've heard it there, ladies and gentlemen. Three laps to go. Three more death loops left in Hawthorne's A grade crit. And um, the group's back together. There's no one up the road. We've got Mark O'Brien driving the pace on the front. We've got TJ on the, uh, behind Jensen. And this rider here, number 238 in front of Jensen with the flappy nah, number race number, takes the race into his hands and just sends one off the front. And everyone's just been left looking around, being like, who's going to chase that back? Marco's like, mate, I'm on the front. I've been in that many attacks today. I can't even count. I'm not interested in that. Um, I think that's TJ. He launches straight. He's like, I'm not letting get that one get away. Neither is Aiden. Um, and we've got Marco looking around still being like, look, I'm not too interested in that. Now, watch, this, watch Marco on this corner as he drops a few wheels. As Jensen goes over the top, I reckon Tom maybe dive bombs that corner as they send it back into the uphill part of the race. And it doesn't, it takes five seconds for Jensen to close that one down. The race is stitched back up. It's all back together now. And, um, and that's as simple as that. That is one lap down. There is two remaining. So this goes back to the age-old question of what do you do? Two laps remaining. What sort of rider are you? I'd love to hear what you would do in this situation um, if you're you know, left with two laps to go. You're sitting on third wheel. Do you launch a flyer? Or are you someone who wants to sit in and try their luck at the sprint? As you can see in the rear cam, that is a heavily heavily reduced peloton there's probably only 15 riders left and that's half the thing with this if you're a rider who's able just to complete a race with the group you've done pretty bloody well with all these hitters you can see marco takes his chance here and jensen wants none of that as he launches his uh, his attack to try to get across he's left a little bit off the back foot there struggling to find the pace and tom is again stuck on his wheel like age-old Weetbix, not letting anything go. He's stalking him like one of the big cats as they're coming into the bottom corner here. Let's see if Jensen could take up some spots, some free spots. Rounds this corner. I reckon he's gained a bike length or two there, surging up to 1,200 watts with uh, you know 30 minutes of racing completed. It's a pretty brutal effort. The group is now back together. Everyone is on the limit. You cannot tell me that there is anybody in this race who has been able to just sit in, relax, take it easy. No, everyone's on their limit. This is the bell lap. It's on, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing to be left out on the table now. You either go for broke if you're going to win this race. There's a lot of looking around going on. The Peloton's not sure of who's going to make that first move. Jensen swings out nice and wide because he doesn't want to be caught too close to the front. He's happy to let a couple of riders shuffle through to the front so he doesn't have to hit the front too. There's a little bit of argy-bargy going on in the rear cam with Pat and Tom. Tom does not want to let Jensen's wheel go. There goes Aiden. He launches a flyer on the right-hand side, hits the group with speed. Jensen realizes that that's a threatening move, so he joins on, uh, and the rest of the peloton follow. It's now super hot coming into this final corner. 700 watts as he's driving the pace 
all the way into this bit, bottom corner, jump off the gas, keep it nice and safe, drill it into this bottom corner, and this is the final sprint. He comes out of it straight in the hoods, 1,200 watts, 1,300 watts, 1,400 watts, up and around Aiden. He goes, Tom is in the drops. He's absolutely drilling it. This is where I think Jensen makes a slight error as he does not completely shut the door to the right-hand side. And you can see Tom sneaking up the inside, throws on the line. Jensen takes first, Tom second, Pat in third, and then Daylight to fourth. It was a brutal, brutal finish. Insane stuff. What a great race, guys. Thank you so much again for watching. If you like this stuff, please subscribe. We want to get those drones up in the air. Uh, hit the like button. Throw some comments in the comment section. And I'm going to see you for the next video. Ciao.